you can see in this illustration that there's two characters and then a really roughly indicated background. Over the course of this three video series, I'm going to work on creating this background using some 3D tools to help me populate the city streets. Because twisty turny city streets are really a perspective nightmare. And even if you are very familiar with drawing in perspective, it might not be your best use of time to draw it manually. So using SketchUp and some photographic textures, we're going to populate this city street and also make some houses that we'll be able to reuse on all future illustrations. So the goal is to not spend extra time that's then wasted all on one drawing, when I can instead make some sort of generic houses that will work well for many illustrations to come. Now the general process is all about saving time. So here you can see I've made five buildings, and the goal is to make just enough to have some believable randomization. I can make a whole village out of these five buildings by just scaling them a little bit, rotating them, and placing them in interesting ways. So if you take a look here, I've made a quick little street corner just by duplicating a few of them and placing them interestingly. And then because it's SketchUp, you can try and see how different shadow settings might look on it. And you can really get an interesting composition going. So I've made them all the proper scale, and I've also used a consistent set of building materials. So they all form sort of a set. And this is going to be really useful for making this background illustration, as well as future background illustrations. They have a nice continuity. So for the remainder of this video, I'm going to model one specific building, so you can get a general sense for the workflow that's involved. And I like to keep them all in the same document, because this allows me to use bits and pieces from some of the houses and actually speed up the process of modeling each subsequent house. You notice I have a little bit of a roof over there in the background. Well, in a minute here, that is going to come in handy. Now, I'm not necessarily telling you every button press I'm doing here. I just want to give you an overview of the workflow so you can know what's possible and the way that I like to work. So since I have this roof here, I can copy that and add it into place. And I am using some reference from Flickr on my other monitor, so I'm not modeling in the dark here. It's nice to have some real-world examples to go by. And now that I've got the major shapes roughed out, I'm going to start doing the subtractive modeling. And this is where I'm adding in doors and windows that will be cut away from the model. So in the same way that I can add geometry, here I can subtract it. It also can be nice to work with the shadows turned on, and this way you get a sense of the volume while you're working. For this door, I'm going to add an archway at the top. And it can be fun to put in some nice irregularities here, because these are all hand-built houses, so they'd have some sort of uneven surfaces and angles that don't quite meet up. But that's the sort of thing that's going to give this the character that I'm looking for. And since I want to keep this geometry as simple as possible, I'm going to end it here 
and in the next video, I'll show you how to apply texture to the surfaces.